Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be making uh, penne cacio e pepe. And that is from Antonio's cookbook, Pasta. So let's get started. So the translation of this recipe is basically small pasta balls with cheese and pepper. So we're getting some water to a boil there. It's not quite there. So once the water boils, we'll be, adding, we'll be cooking the pasta and we'll start mixing the sauce, which is going to be just a few minutes. Okay, our water is boiling now, and it's always a good idea to add salt to your to your water before you add the pasta or while you're cooking the pasta. A nice generous amount of salt. So we're going to go ahead and add the pasta as well and get that cooking. And again, this is regular penne pasta versus the kind we couldn't find, the panette. Correct. Um, so this is 350 grams of dried penne pasta. And then we're just going to bring that back up to a boil before we set our timer. And we're just going to cook that according to the package directions or until it is al dente. Apparently what they say is wrong because a wash pot does boil because I'm watching it and it is certainly boiling. <laughs> okay, we think our pasta is ready. Um, you know, we don't really go by it. We do go by a timer, but if it's 10, 12 minutes or whatever, we don't go by that necessarily. We always take a little taste of our pasta to see if it's how we like it. Yeah, just make sure it's done the way you want it. Mm. And that is ready. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and mix everything together. So the next step is now that our pasta is done, we're going to transfer our pasta into a bowl. And again, this is probably one of the easiest pasta recipes you will ever find because at this point we're literally just going to mix the remaining ingredients into the pasta. Okay, and then we are just going to set that aside and bring out our cheese and oil and pepper. Okay, so while the pasta is nice and hot, we are going to add our cheese and oil. So first we're going to add, and this is where um, Antonio deviates from the regular cacio e pepe recipe, as he adds ricotta cheese. Now, I'm sure there are going to be people that are going to think this is sacrilegious, <laughs> but we're just following Antonio's recipe the way it's written. He hasn't let us down yet, so we're following his recipe. Right, so um, we are adding the ricotta cheese. Okay. And that is 200 grams of ricotta. Okay, so there is that. Let me set that aside. And then we have some Parmesan cheese there. We have grated 100 grams of Parmesan cheese. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then finally we have some extra virgin olive oil. You do want to get the extra virgin olive oil because that just tastes so much better than regular olive oil. And that is six tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, and we've added that. And then we're just going to mix that together. Mm -hmm. So it's nice and creamy and delicious. Well, delicious is yet to, yet to be proven. We'll see if it's delicious or not. <laughs> I have no doubt it will be delicious. I've, none of the recipes of Antonio's that we've tried have been bad. So when we were first introduced to cacio e pepe, the recipe had butter in it, which is, I guess, not the traditional way of making it. So I'm eager to see what this one tastes like. Which is good, by the way, with the butter. We liked it quite a bit. This is a little bit different than that. Okay, and then we are going to be adding a little bit of the hot pasta water. Um, we usually just do a ladle or so at a time until... You basically want to judge, and you know, when the sauce looks right to you. I think this one's going to need, yeah, some, some pasta water for sure. Um, it looks fantastic so far. So we are going to add a little pasta water to this mixture. Because you do want your cheese to be nice and melted and smooth. I am going to start with two, mix it up a little bit, and see how we look. Okay, it looks like our sauce is nice and smooth and creamy. And the final step is just to add a lot of black pepper. Now I added two ladles of pasta water, which marginally may have been too much. I don't know, but it still looks good. Yeah, we'll see how it turned out. You know, while, when the pasta sits a little bit as well, it really does absorb a lot of liquid. So cacio e pepe, you can't forget the pepper as an ingredient. And from every recipe I've seen, personally, you add a generous amount of pepper. Yes, add a lot. And I once said in one of our previous videos that you can't add too much pepper, to which my partner replied, yes, you can. Not in this dish. <laughs> well, I guess that depends on your tolerance for pepper, so... 
Okay, and it looks like our pasta is ready, so we are going to go ahead, plate it up, and we are going to put some shaved parmesan um, on top. You can also use pecorino romano um, if you want to. Uh, we have the, the parmesan on hand, so that's what we'll be using, and then we'll go ahead and do the taste test. Mm, mamma mia! So, let's see what this tastes like. So let's take a, take a gander here and see what it, we have. Mm. Mm. This is definitely different to mm. the, the cacio e pepe that we've been making up to mm. now. I would say that this is not exactly what I would expect from a cacio e pepe. If, I had, if someone had given this to me and told me it's cacio e pepe, I wouldn't have expected it. Mm. Yeah, it's a little different than the real thing. Uh, yeah, um, for me, it's, it's more like a sophisticated mac and cheese. Mm, yeah, that's a good description. So I guess if you want something that is traditionally more more like the traditional cacio e pepe, then this is probably not the right recipe for you. Um, if you're looking for a way to maybe stretch your parmesan cheese and use the pasta that you have on hand, then this will be great. Anyway, if you decide to try this at home, um, let us know what you think. And with that, we're saying goodbye. Okay, and I'm going to eat it anyway. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs>